Well, there's only so much that myself or Steve can tell you about how your support is making a difference in the lives and youth and in turn our community. So at this point, we're going to turn the podium over to two young people who are very brave enough, or so brave, to share their story with us this morning. And it's not easy to speak to a crowd like this, even if it is your job and what you do for a living. So I really want to give, want you guys to give a really warm welcome to Andrew Menderlein and Angela Renwick. They've seen their lives turned around thanks to, first, their hard work, but also the services provided by Youth Opportunities Unlimited. So let's welcome Andrew Menderlein. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I grew up in Victoria, BC with my mom and my brother. My attitude was poor and I caused a lot of trouble. It even got worse when I was 13 and my mom moved in with my stepdad who lived in Nanaimo. I didn't want to live with them so I started arguing and fighting with everyone and running away from home. They warned me that they would send me to live, send me to live with my dad if I ran away again. I hadn't seen my dad since I was two years old, and I didn't believe them. But the next time I came back from taking off, I had a, a ticket to, uh, for a flight to London. The plane was leaving that night. I had to say goodbye to my brother, all my friends and family, and pack up and go. I was 14. When I arrived at the airport, I had no idea who I was looking for, and I didn't know what my dad looked like. I was scared about what kind of person I was going to meet. When I finally met my dad, it was awkward, and it was a long car ride home. My dad was really glad that he finally got one of his sons, because that's what he always wanted. He was a good-natured person, I took, and I took it for granted and started giving him problems. I started smoking and drinking and doing drugs, not listening to anyone, running with the wrong crowd and skipping school and acting up. My dad wanted to do the right thing and wanted to show me what I was doing was wrong. But I wouldn't listen. I thought I knew everything. I ended up in jail a couple times, and my dad even had me arrested for assaulting him. At the age of 16, I was kicked out of school and put in group home for kids where, like me, didn't have homes to go back to. I was really, I was really trouble kid at that point. I didn't know who to turn to. I felt lost. And I was like a young bird in a children's book, wandering around and asking everyone, are you my mother? My dad gave me another chance to live at home with him, and it fell apart again. And that's how I ended up in a shelter for the first time. I had no idea I would be homeless for four years. I remember the first night in the shelter. I really didn't want to talk to anyone. I was crying during the night when everyone was sleeping. I remember trying to keep quiet so no one would hear me. It was super hard to live in a shelter and keep a job, and it was hard to be a student and stay in school. I was working part-time as a dishwasher, but I ended up quitting and dropping out of school. I hung out at the drop-in center downtown, which everyone knew as the YAC, or the Youth Action Center. It was my home away from home. They had lots of things that I needed and helped out a lot. They served breakfast in the morning and meals at night, and always had fresh coffee and staff you could always chat with if you had any problems. Of all the times of the year, Christmas was the hardest for me. I spent many alone, or sometimes would phone my mom in BC and wish her a Merry Christmas. At the time, I was getting into trouble and found out with my so-called friends. Um, they almost got me into serious trouble with the police. I realized then I needed to change my life. The days were long and it was lonely. It was not pleasant at all. I heard about a job through the YMCA program, applied, and I was hired. Next, I went to Ontario Works and found a super small place to live. I had a place to call home. After working at the YMCA for about eight months, it was time to go back to school. I quit the job and enrolled at Fanshawe College. I didn't have an ac academic background for the courses I was taking, and it took a lot of willpower to even try to do my work. I started spending more time at the bar with my books. The stress really got to me and I started spiraling downwards and acting strange. 
One day reading the list of symptoms of, of mental illness in my psychology book, I realized I had a lot of them. The stress kept getting worse. Everything was weighing down on me. Finally, I had a breakdown. I started to walk from Fanshawe College to downtown London. Every time I got to a street corner, I'd close my eyes and walk through the intersection. I don't know how I made it downtown. I went to the old familiar yak. A staff member greeted me at the door and knew something was really wrong. They talked to me for a while and then called the mental health crisis line and finally got me into the hospital for evaluation. That's when I was diagnosed with psychosis and put on medication. It took me a lot to accept the fact that I had an illness and it took a long time to get on the medication that worked. I was in and out of the hospital for about four or five years until my last admission when I was hospitalized for three months. I was a mess. I was, I, I was in the psychiatric intensive care unit for almost a month and a half. Finally, a couple of different medications worked and I started acting normally. So I was able to leave the hospital, but I was homeless again. I started to, uh, taking my medication and I didn't want to go back to the old ways. My family didn't know what to do or how to react, but they learned about my condition and supported me. Fortunately, I was put, on, put in a program called PEP. It stands for Prevention and Early Intervention Program for Psychosis. It was a great program to help me get back on track. They had a lot of groups for people to learn the skills so they could eventually recover. They assigned me a case manager who helped me get my life back. All the case managers as well as the doctors were really nice and made it easier for me to get better. Things started getting easier and seemed less impossible. I was on the right medication and staying on it. I continued to take my meds and I started volunteering and helping with the programs at PEP. One of these was an art group. I started helping people draw and paint, create works of art that really helped them. I enjoyed all, all of this and I slowly was changing my life and started doing things that before people thought I would fail at. I started surprising myself. For once there was no giving up. Eventually I got a good job at the athletic club working as a custodian and really enjoyed it and did very well at it. I've been working there for the past three years. I also have a part-time job through PEP doing research for one of their studies where they trained us to be as real researchers. I quit smoking and I started working out on a regular basis. I also got my driver's license which was something I thought that I'd never do. I reconnected with my mom and she started seeing me change and also felt that she had to help me out. Once a year she would come down to live with, to visit me uh, and I always appreciated it. I love my mom and I'm glad that she made the hard decision that she made because it made me who I am today. Over the years I've had many homes and you can call any place home as long as you're happy and with the people that you like and love. I know what it is to be homeless and the sadness and the longing and the loneliness and the way that you can stop believing in yourself. There are a lot of young people who have no place to call home. So no matter how bad it gets, never give up. It's been a tough lesson and, and one I'll never forget. I'm thankful to my family, friends and, and to all the organizations that helped me along the way. Youth Opportunities Unlimited, as well as PEP through London Health Science Center, as well as YMCA. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here now. Thanks to them, I'm in a position to pursue my next goal, which is to become a social worker so that I can help young people who are trying to cope with the same things that I went through because everyone needs a home.